Actually, funny that you asked that because uh, Shane told me that it's like, it seems like you have the better remote shot coming up and um, it seemed like ours was a little harder because it was in the rough and it was a chip and it was not a great lie, but um, man, it just it looked better on TV than it did in person. <laughs> uh, celebration, were you channeling Tiger at all? No, I mean, it was just more of just, uh, it was a mixture of a lot of things. Obviously, it's it's pretty sick to see it in real time and, and, and watch it go in and it kind of came out just how I hoped it would. And um, it was also part relieved that I didn't have a part but coming back. Uh, There's a lot of different emotions, but uh, yeah, just obviously needed a good round today to have any chance. Obviously, would probably need some help, but uh, just glad to, to give myself the best chance I felt like I could going into today. Yeah. So you've had a little about, oh, oh you had a little bit of success out here. Played pretty well in 2022. Is there, what, what do you like about this course? as it matches up to your game? I mean, I just like the fact that it doesn't really f feel like it. there's a bias towards anybody. I feel like you just, uh, if you if you hit it straight, it, it benefits you. If you hit it long, it benefits you. If you putt it well, it benefits you. If you're good around the green. So I just feel like uh, it's very demanding. And um, it, I feel like there are other places in the world where, you know, distance is always a thing. And I feel like here, obviously, when you look at the list of champions, there's plenty of different types of players. And I feel like uh, when I step on the first tee, I have every much of a chance as anybody else. By my count, you played the junior players three times? Yes. Is there anything about that experience, those three years, that, that helped you or prepared you for? For, for sure. I mean, uh, I remember uh, playing in it. Obviously, it was in a different time of year, so it wasn't overseeded. It was Bermuda. It's kind of like it was in May. Uh, when they used to play it in May. But um, the funny thing was, as a junior golfer, I hated it here. I, I wasn't very good off the tee. Um, but you kept coming back. <laughs> yeah, the Bermuda Bermuda Greens coming from Chicago is a difficult thing to get adjusted to. Um, obviously, it being overseeded is a little bit different than Bermuda this week. So obviously, uh, it's more like bent where I'm used to. But for the most part, I've become a better driver of the ball, hopefully, obviously, since I was... Uh, more than 10 years ago, but um, no, it was uh, it was a fun experience as a junior golfer, but uh, it's nothing close to what it's like this week. You said the lie on 17 was not great? Yeah, so there's a little bit of rough on the back, and obviously with the pin being there yesterday, there's a lot of traffic, so a lot of people have stood, and so a lot of the rough was kind of burnt out and, and pressed away from where the hole was today. Um, and my ball had just nestled just in the area where all the grass was away. And so there's a, a, a bit of a tuft to grass behind it. There was a couple of options. I, I pulled out putter because I didn't want to have to chip it. Then I tried to pull out a pitching wedge and see if I, I like that to, to try to get it trundling. And um, I took my chances with a 56. It just had a good feeling about it. And I figured, worst case, um, try to make the putt from above the ridge. Obviously, it seems like it, it's holable from, from history. But... Um, yeah, it just came out perfect and um, just got over the ridge and the rest was history. Was the wind getting tricky on the tee at that point? Yeah, obviously. Little, kind of a little front that passed north of here and the wind switched a little bit. For sure. There was, a, there was for the most of the day, it was about a southwest wind and then it kind of flipped. Uh, it was hard to trust, obviously, because it did 180 pretty much at the snap of a finger. Um, and then, and then when you get on that tee with all the stands, it's really hard to to feel because certain flags on one grandstand do one thing, and then the flags on the other side do another. So um, it gets a bit confusing, but uh, you kind of have to play the percentages. I feel like that's what we did. We could have hit a gap wedge, and we felt like there were visions of that spinning off the green, like we've seen earlier in the week, and uh, went with the percentage play. And obviously, uh, didn't come out exactly the way we planned, but a two is a two. Yeah, that, Thank uh, you. The, right now, I think you're seven behind Wyndham. He's still playing out there. Does that change your mentality going tomorrow? Going into tomorrow, if, he's, if you're not eight, nine shots behind, that you might not you might not win, but you can still make it top three or top, top five. Or how do you assess going into Sunday? Obviously, I, I can't play defense. I can't do anything about what Wyndham or Xander or any of those players do. Um, again, it's a golf course that anything can happen. I think the first year I was here. Both Lee Westwood and, and Bryson hit in the water on, on 4T. I think Bryson like topped one and 
just weird things yeah. can happen. Obviously, Wyndham's a great player. All those players are great players. So um, chances are something amazing for me is going to have to happen tomorrow. And uh, I'll just play the best round that I can. Um, I've seen it happen before. Um, and, and obviously, there's a lot of golf to be played today. So um, I'll be an interested spectator to see what i got to do tomorrow. Thank you, Doug. Hey, thanks, Doug. Right, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Doug.